Okay, so we've separated out our tables. Now we need to create relationships between our tables, okay? So for the data that we've got here, I've set things up in a way that's pretty self-explanatory, right? We, are, we basically have these index columns um, in all of our sort of lookup tables, right? We have like an ID here, which relates, if I jump to the sales table, to an ID column inside of your my fact table, my sales, my table of sales information, okay? Now, your, your data might not always be perfect like this, okay? It might just, you might have like, instead of an ID, you might have the actual, you know, city name or something like that, like we have in the location table. That is honestly okay. It's, it's not the end of the world if you have that. I guess just the most optimized way is to have sort of this short form coding. Um, for, for sort of like an index. So if you have some sort of index, then that's great. But if not, I just honestly wouldn't be too worried about it right now. Okay. What the, the most important thing here, though, is to just to link up the correct columns. And so you can do this a couple of ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab um, that column. I'm going to click it and drag it over the ID column in that sales table, right? And then it creates this relationship. Now let's quickly just have a look, let's drill into this relationship, okay? And this is predominantly going to be the relationship that you care about, that you will use sort of 90 to 95% of the time. You want a one-to-many relationship. You want the one side on the lookup table side, because remember that the sort of granularity of this table is only representing a salesperson one time. And then you want to come down and have the arrow pointing towards your fact table, which has a star representing the many side. And the many side is um, because a salesperson can obviously sell many times, right? And so as a filtering table, you want those tables to always sort of be one iteration of um, sort of only a list of you know unique values for a particular um you know, group, right? Salespeople, products, locations, etc. So products is only going to be listed once. So the product ID, I'm just going to click it and I'm going to drag it down and drop it on the product ID down here. Okay. And what you can also do is you can hover over the relationship and it will highlight. And this is a good way to sort of check that you've created the right relationship. You can also create relationships um, by utilizing this manage relationships icon up here. You can click on it and you can say new and you can um, go and grab a table. So let's have a look at our dates column. I can highlight my date here, right? And then I can come down here and go sales, and I can again highlight my purchase date because I want to draw a relationship between the date and my purchase date. One to many, make this uh, relationship active, and I'm going to go okay. And you'll see here that it's made that relationship one to many. Um, the arrow is pointing down. So you see the waterfall of filters, those arrows are going to point always to the mini side. Okay, and then I'm going to go location ID. I'm just going to click and drag that down here. Same thing and customer ID. Okay, so now I have this waterfall of filters all linked up down to my fact table. Now, any time, the way to think about this and why you need to visualize this is that any time you now want to start filtering your calculations, the measures that we're ultimately going to write in DAX, you want to be able to visualize, okay, well, if I um, create a filter on my products, I know that the filter is going to flow down this relationship. It's going to go through this arrow and it's going to filter this table automatically. It's going to create what is called context for our um, calculations to you know, run their analysis. And it's going to be and it's going to enable us to do these in a really dynamic way. You know, if you've seen um, reports in Power BI, you've probably seen how you can click between within filters or within graphs and that will change the the, the results in another in another visualization or in your report well that's what this rela these relationships are doing these re relationships are enabling us to do a filter through here that will flow down to filter this particular table down here okay now when you're starting out in power bi a lot of times you get really confused here and you think oh my model's more complicated or my situation is slightly different and i'm telling you right like with with 100 confidence if you simplify your data and think, okay, what can I create? What can I create as a lookup table? What can I create as a fact table? You will find that nearly all your scenarios can somehow be encapsulated in this strategy, in this sort of model strategy. Okay. And you know, I know that from experience because I've dealt with very complex, uh, complex scenarios and um, sort of client situations in the past. 
and I've created models that look exactly like this. Every sort of model that you find from Enterprise DNA on our showcase, if you can, if you, you know, ultimately upgrade to be able to access all the showcases, you know, you will see that all of the models are exactly the same. They're the same type of look and feel. They might have different lookup table types and they might have totally different data on a totally different scenario, but you want to always aim for something that looks somewhat like this. Okay. It might look simpler, it might look slightly more advanced, there might be way more tables, and that's cool. You can have multiple fact tables as well, but you still want your fact tables to sort of be down the bottom here in a row, and you want your lookup tables up here to be able to filter those tables. Um, you know, you can have, you know, you might have, say, budgeting information or something like that. Well, that would sit down here, and it would also link up to relevant tables and your lookup tables, and you could then compare your budgets to your actual sales. So these are, and these examples are, um, you know, these are covered many, many times over with enterprise DNA content in some way. But this, what, this is what you want to aim for. And then once you set up things like this, then your life in, within Power BI, you know, and creating analysis in Power BI is simplified so much. It's just unbelievable. Okay, so, you know, getting this, cannot, cannot stress enough, getting this area right is just essential. Okay, so I think, look, I've covered all of the things I wanted to cover from a beginner's guide um, uh, point of view here. You know, there, there's other you know, variations of sort of like different relationships you, you can have. And, you know, there's also different philosophies around how you can set this up. But this is what I want you to aim for, okay? I'm just really focusing in on sort of the, the key things that are going to get you um, up to speed quickly with Power BI. And this is, this is how I would do it. And this is how I currently do it even now. Um, and more and more advanced work. So so really target this, really target these exact relationship types, setup, etc. Right, okay, once we're done here, we can now move on and, and start creating some calculations and we're gonna dive into some DAX uh, calculations right now. Okay, let's move on.